Your grandfather was a coal miner, mm -hmm. and here you are today spearheading a green new future. You've set some very ambitious targets for 2030 for Sky. What do you think have been the pivotal moments in your life that have motivated you in terms of your vision and your actions? I think in, ter in terms of pivotal moments, uh, there's, there's, there's probably only two or three actually, I think, that really have done it. Actually, the first one you talked about my grandfather. I suspect actually right at the outset there was, there was some of that there. When you grow up in a, essentially a rural community, um, I think one of the things I always felt was this kind of connection with the community and the land in its broader sense. When I was probably 18, 19, and they closed the mines in the northeast, there was the right and wrongs of that decision. But, but what I re always remember was that nothing came afterwards. And I think it was my first experience of when you lose something that you rely and depend upon, and when it goes away, there can be really quite profound implications. My, and my father's generation, my dad didn't work down the pit, but a lot of his friends did. And um, essentially, they never worked again, pretty much. And, and so I think that definitely had, a, had an, an impression on me. I then was very lucky that my early career was spent at Procter & Gamble. It was a very special time at, at P&G. We, we, uh, the, the people I worked with were some of the best people I've ever, ever worked with. Many of them have gone on to do similar things uh, that I've done and been, been successful. Um, but there it was the first time I really got exposed to some of the conundrums and the, and, and, and the trade-offs in terms of how you grow a business. So if you take a business like um, laundry, for example, you know, one of the reasons that business has grown, of course, is because we all wash our clothes so much more today than we ever used to. And that was actually how we grew the market. If you take a product like a disposable diaper, it's a wonderful product that uh, is so much more convenient, helps lives of young mums, protects babies better, all of that stuff, but has real issues around things like landfill and how do you dispose of it. So I really got exposed to some of those trade-offs that you have to, have to make. And, and I think early on in my career, that got me to think about uh, mm. that was the case. And then when I got a chance to run Sky, inevitably in those moments, or the, you know, in a sense, you've been working for that opportunity your whole life. And so I was very aware of this idea that Sky both could be, and I wanted it to be, just more than the kind of narrowness of the business. It could stand for something more, and it could be a more responsible business and could be aware of its broader impact. And certainly at the time I had, uh, you know, a young family, uh, all the team actually had a young family. I think that, that definitely affected us all, and we wanted to do something that was not just good business, but, but was a good business, if you see what I mean. So they, they probably are the things I think that affected me more than anything. And just picking up, obviously, the sort of first ambition with the carbon neutral at Sky, both mm. in terms of new technologies, mm. looking for kind of carbon efficiencies with the um, Sky Q box, and then also kind of changing behaviours mm. here within the culture. What has surprised you most, both in terms of the challenges and also the successes? Well, I think when you actually get into, when you, when you set bold targets or diff, very mm. different targets in terms of what the business is going to seek to achieve, you know, you have to be very definite. So at the time, becoming carbon neutral felt like a very, very big step for us. Um, some of the work we did in the rainforest felt like a big, a yeah. big step. It, of course, it quite quickly gets you into, you know, well, where is, is the biggest impact that you have today? And for us, um, the biggest impact is in customers' homes. The amount of electricity, essentially, that our products use in customers' homes would account for something like 50 to 60% of our total emissions. So you have to be bold then in terms of the interventions that you're seeking to, to make. And you have to have the confidence uh, to be bold uh, and be somewhat declarative with the business around what we're going to do. That has then led to a, a whole sea change um, of activity throughout, throughout Sky that is actually not, also not just about Sky, but essentially about the broader supply base that we, uh, that we have. You, you know, Sky is a, it's a, it's a reasonably big business, but, but when you start to think of all the things that we impact and all the people we work with, it really becomes very, very big. So I think the, the, the first thing that kind of jolted me or I realized that is that you had to be, as I say, very, very definite. But then I realized that, that there are so many people who want to want to make a difference. There were so many people in the business who didn't really need convincing, they just needed enabling. There were so many of our suppliers who, who quickly signed up and said, we're going to be part of that. Some of our component suppliers, the assemblers, uh, we, where we put our, our products together, uh, a business like Unipart, yep. straight away 
wanted to be part of that journey and to play a role. And, and so actually what happened, a little bit like pushing a boulder down a hill, you know, you, you kind of got to get the thing moving, but very quickly it started to take on um, a, a sort of life of itself and a momentum of, it, of its own. And, and really we've just tried to build on that and keep resetting our horizon every few years um, so that we keep that, that whole journey going. Yeah, and what gives you that confidence to kind of yeah. achieve that ambitious target for 2030? I think, uh, I mean, a bit of success, I think. I think success always breeds confidence. So, and, and it can be a very powerful tool in the business because of course now we can look back and say, well, you know, if we did it there, we can do it here. Yeah. And so you don't really have to lay out so much the rationale yeah. for people. You just, because people can, can turn to that and, and, and see it. So I think that's the first thing. I think secondly, probably more than anything, I think Sky still at its heart. You know, we're a, we're a sort of bunch of doers. You know, we like to solve problems. Um, we tend to get um, bogged down a bit when we get stuck in sort of strategy and theory. We, don't, we like to solve things on the go yep. and get going. Yep. Um, so I think it, it plays very much with the sort of the culture and the beat of the business, which is, you know, let's decide what the problem is and then let's just start trying to, uh, to solve it. Um, and then the, the other nice thing I think about it is that, you know, if we are here today saying, right, by 2030, we're going to be net carbon zero, and then eventually, you know, we're going to be hopefully carbon positive as a business. But actually, the, you know, you can, you can mine success all the way along that journey. Yeah. So it's not a case where you have to wait 10 years and say, right, we've done it. It's literally along that journey, there's incremental improvement that you can tap into and, and build upon and it gives you a lot of dividends uh, when you're doing the work. Yeah. And sort of just looking at the wider industry which we're all living in at the moment with the you know, mm. heartbreak of the COVID-19 crisis, clearly you've been building this momentum exactly mm. like you said uh, and that's breeding kind of more um, buy-in mm. um, both in terms of customers and your employees. But do you think the financial impact of the COVID-19 is going to have an impact in terms of your initiatives that you've mm. mapped out for the carbon neutral initiatives that you're continuing Didn't to you? drive? Yeah. I mean, it's a real concern. So I think the first thing is you've got to, you've got to be very sort of present around where you are. I think you're often the job at the top of the business is to um, understand when you're on track or when you have to divert a little bit but but very very importantly understand how you're going to get back on track so we are not going to change our aspirations our goals and our plans in fact i would i would say that they're even more important and i feel even more energized today than i ever did to make that to make that happen now you know in the real world of, of dealing with covid and de you know we've got to we've got to put you know, people into customers' homes and they need to be protected. That's the most important priority. They need PPE, they need face masks. And so, you know, for a short term, we've, we've, we've probably had more single-use plastic, for example, than uh, we would like by a long way. So we've got to, we've got to figure that out. We are figuring that out. But I think it's really, really important that, that we as a business and then everybody else does not lose sight. The environmental imperative is not going away. And actually COVID, I think, is a real reminder to us all of the outcome or what can happen uh, when you know the infrastructure of the planet gets out of balance and and things go things go wrong, and I think often you, you know generally in this area when we talk about um, sort of natural science, quite often we, we talk about other species and we use the impact on the planet or species decline, for example, which sometimes is one step removed from a real human impact. Well, you know what? For the last three months, we have seen you know the white heat of human impact. So we better internalise that, I think, and mm. do something about it.